You know what really sucks? Spending a ton of money on tires only to have them fall apart after a thousand miles, leaving you stranded or spending an equivalent amount on Uber rides back home, or even worse, calling your significant other for a ride back to your house. Seriously, I mean, what the heck? As much as tubeless was supposed to revolutionize the road tire world, it's clear that not all tubeless tires are created equal. And what do I mean by that? Well, I ride around 8,000 miles a year and I've had a chance to ride a lot of the high performance tires. The GP5000 STR, the Corsa Pros, the Eagle F1 Super Sports, the Pirelli P0 Race TLRs, both the regular and the SL version, the S-Works Turbo tires, et cetera, et cetera. Some of these were amazing all year long and some, despite their high price tag, became so unreliable that after a thousand miles, I just didn't see the point in using them any longer. I tossed them in the trash knowing full well that I was actually saving money and headaches by swallowing my pride and getting rid of them. And after riding so many tires, I keep coming back to these three. The Pirelli P0 Race TLR SLs, the Vittoria Corsa Pros, and the Continental Grand Prix 5000 STRs. Each of them I like for different reasons. And if I'm missing a tire that you swear by, do me a favor and drop me a comment below. Under normal riding conditions, all fast road tires are basically equal for the first 800 to 1,000 miles or so. Yes, there are differences in rolling resistances and grip, but for the most part, you should be able to take any top tier road tire from any of the big brands, throw it on your bike and ride a thousand miles without any issues. It's the equivalent of a modern car company's kind of three year, 36,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty. But modern car can't make it to the 36,000 mile mark without a major issue. There's something wrong. And the same can be said about a road tire not making it to a thousand miles. Now, after a thousand miles, well, that's where things start to get interesting and more on that later. But for the first thousand miles, I'm not sure if there's any tire that I'd rather have than the Vittoria Corsa Pro. It checks all the boxes of the typical performance road tire. It's light, it's fast, both in feeling and objectively based on rolling resistance tests, and it grips really, really well. The intangible of the Corsa Pro is that it feels incredibly soft on the road, likely due to the cotton casing. When I went to France last year, the 30 millimeter Corsa Pro was my tire of choice and it performed flawlessly over 400 or so miles and 50,000 feet of climbing and technical descending. I couldn't have asked for a better tire. It was also my choice of tire for the Lodigia Classic in September. That time I opted for the 28 millimeter version in hopes of gaining a little extra speed. Again, it performed flawlessly over the 202 mile race. If my number one tire for less than a thousand miles is the Corsa Pro, my close number two is the Continental Grand Prix 5000 STR, followed by the Pirelli P0 Race TLR SL in the number three spot. But see, as I approached a thousand miles on the Corsa Pros, I started to run into problems. They just didn't seem to hold up. Now I'd been warned about these tires, told that I'd start to notice cuts in the tread and that they'd be problematic. All these things were true, but I have to admit that they lasted longer than I had expected. I think that's likely due to some improvements in the puncture resistance, and I think that modern tire sealants are just really, really good. But it was somewhere between 1,000 and 1,200 miles on those tires that I had to make that dreaded call to my wife to grab my truck and pick me up. It's a call that I hate to make, as I'm sure you'd agree. At that point, I decided that enough was enough. I was done with those tires. So after the 1,000 mile mark, this is where the ranking kind of starts to shift. The Grand Prix 5000 STR moves into the number one spot, the Pirelli P0 TLR SL moves into the number two, and the normal P0 TLR takes the number three spot. And the Corsa Pros, well, they're off the list after a thousand miles, unfortunately. The Pirelli P0 TLR and TLR SLs are what I believe to be the most supple tires of the bunch. They're not the fastest rolling and they're not the most puncture resistant, but they're dang good and they're a great tire if you're looking for a slightly different feel. The SL is a little bit lighter and rolls a hair faster than the standard TLR, but the trade-off is a slight decrease in puncture protection. I think it's worthwhile. Which only leaves one tire left, the reigning, the undisputed champ, the Continental Grand Prix 5000 STR. And I don't know what the secret sauce is that they're baking into these tires, but it's incredible. In many ways, you get the puncture protection of a much heavier tire with the grip, low rolling resistance, and feel of some of the lightest tires available on the market today. Not only that, but they'll go for thousands and thousands of miles. And I think that's what makes this such a unicorn of a tire. It does it all, and it does it all really, really well. 
I'm currently riding the 30 millimeter version on my MV45s and the 32 millimeter version on my MV23s and plan to keep them on until the wear indicators tell me it's time to swap them out. Objectively, all of these tires are within a few watts of each other, but each bring kind of their own unique feel to your ride. They're also all available at your local bike shop or online and range between, I don't know, 80 and $100, depending on where you shop and who you know. It's my belief that a tire swap is the quickest way to change the way your bike performs and the way that it feels. It's also probably the most cost-effective way to get faster. But maybe I'm missing some tires. Do me a favor and drop me a comment down below and let me know your top three favorite road tires, both tubeless and clincher. Anyways, thanks for watching. Until next time.